Good day everyone, my name is Anais Stane. I'm also the entomologist here at Babylon Sturen. Um, the garden is currently closed to the public and here behind me this is our own apiary in the garden. It's also not really accessible to the public because of bee stings, uh, but I'm inviting you in to come and have a look with me what's happening inside. Welcome inside. I'd like to show you some of the different hives we have in here. This one here is the Australian Flow Hive, which was invented by a father and son, um, Cedar and Stuart Anderson. Um, it's quite an expensive one, but also quite an investment, as it's very convenient for the beekeeper. So you've got your brood chamber here. Um, so this is where the queen does all the work. She's laying her eggs in here, um, and the worker bees also tend the the young bees. Up here, this is known as the super, so this is where they produce the honey. And if you come have a closer look, you can actually see how them operating in here. Um, this is known as an observation window. At the back of this the hive here, this is where the magic happens. This is where you extract the honey. It's quite simple. It's two strips you have to remove. So yeah, it's a small strip here. Um, and if you open up this panel here, um, this is where the extraction happens. So you, when you open this one at the top, you've got a, a, a key you insert. It goes all the way to the, to the front side of the, of the hive and you just twist it. Um, so the cells where they produce the honey is all artificial, it's plastic cells. So it's not your typical honey wax comb. Um, so when you insert the tool and you turn it, it squeezes those plastic cells and it forces the honey to flow down. And then you've got a tube you insert here, a plastic tube and then the honey starts to flow into, into that tube. And you can simply just stand here with your, with your jar and you have honey on tap. As I mentioned earlier, it's quite a convenient hive to have when it comes to extraction because you don't physically open the hive. Um, while the bees are working by entering and exiting from the front side, you are working at the back. So it's not even necessary to have proper bee suit gear. You can just do it with normal clothes um, to extract the honey because you don't disrupt them. Um, the bees won't be aggressive as you don't physically have to open the hive. The constant temperature of about 38 degrees Celsius also remains inside the hive. So that's why you can extract honey any time of the day. But it's better to do it when it's hot because then the honey flows easier into, into your jar. This one here is known as a skip. It's a simple basket dome which can be used as a hive but rather for uh, catching a swarm because you can see here it's completely hollow inside uh, so it's a perfect cavity dry for the bees and that's what they want uh, so they would like to start a hive here but when it comes to the harvesting of honey you almost have to destroy the whole uh, skip to get the honey so it's not ideal to to house a swarm but rather to catch one and it's very light so it's very easy to transport when you catch your swarm So this hive here behind me, this is the Golden Hive uh, from the UK, quite popular hive in the UK. Um, it's a typical top bar hive, so in other words, you don't have uh, different departments, compartments like a brood chamber and a super. It's all in one, a big chamber. Um, it also is quite deep. Uh, your frames are much deeper going deep into the, into the hive. Um, also much better for isolation, so it's perfect for the winter months where it's much colder. The bees want wants wants that heat inside. So this is a very good hive for the winter and especially for the UK with those very um, cold winters. When it comes to harvesting the honey, you don't have to open a super or to have to do any heavy lifting. So it's less strain on your back. Uh, you just have to inspect the frames one by one and you can physically remove the honey comb from the frames. The only disadvantage about that is it's a quite a long process because now the bees have to make new comb. Um, in order to produce new honey. You often see bees nesting in trees, also in old logs. Now this is a good example of that. Uh, this is a top bar hive, 
one big cavity where the bees produce the honeycomb and also produce the honey. So you can see here is one entrance to the, to the hive um, where the bees will move in and out. The hive. And it looks more natural, but it's not one way you actually want to extract honey. But this is, it, it just looks very beautiful and in our apiary. So this last one is the Langstroth hive. So a very popular hive, most beekeepers actually use this hive. It's um, been used over 150 years. So you've got different depart compartments here. Uh, your brood chamber, this is a double brood chamber. So it's two big brood chambers here. And for the top part is the uh, super. So this is where you extract the honey. So when you want to remove the honey, you will simply use your hive tool to uh, loosen it from the brood chamber and you can take a whole super with the uh, frames and you can extract the honey. Um, typically you put the frames into a swinger so it's like a centrifuge and that's how the honey will spin out and thereafter you can reuse those frames, put it back into the super and back on top of the hive and they will produce more honey. Um, there's a lot more strain on your back because it's sometimes quite heavy um, to give you more perspective a super which is completely fully capped with honey it will weigh over 10 kilograms um, and if you have to carry a few of them you will actually feel it um, but it's a very easy hive to use also easy to maintain um, so that's why most beekeepers also use this one when it comes to maintenance of this hive it's quite easy as you can um, put everything apart and clean everything inside so it's very easy to reach all those um, cavities inside um, so it's also uh, used by most beekeepers. 